you see, she, okay, half, t tonight, okay, True Health Tuesdays, this is the health renaissance, okay, we're in, because we're talking about deep sleep. restorative sleep and I wish I had the quote from Henry V because if, if anyone's ever seen Kenneth Branagh's Henry V it's one of my favorite movies if I'm ever feeling down I go back there and watch that and he's walking around these campfires and he's looking at these people and you know just just as regular soldiers and he thinks oh god if I could only sleep full belly and a clear mind, a deep, restful sleep. I mean, he's just, his longing is incredible. Um, today we have to, because this is one thing on vaccines, because they are forcing vaccines on us, okay? And the Nazis tried to do forced medical procedures, and it didn't work out too well. It turns out that we should have a sovereign right of our own body. Now, what's shocking is I actually wrote... Um, we were trying to get some stories because we've got uh, one of our patients is an attorney and they're actually suing the state for that it's illegal and it's against it's morally reprehensible to force medical procedures on your own body and and so here i'm writing this please give us your story at why you want control of the medical procedures done to you and i thought this is so wacko that i would have to even write this but it turns out that federal law um, they, they had a thing where somebody was attacking, well, he, he was diagnosed HIV positive and he was going after people with an HIV, a blood filled needle. And they viewed it as an assault. So it turns out that if someone's assaulting you with a medical procedure without completely informed consent that you sign off for, um, that's illegal. So, you know, there are some precedents. Just know that it's absolutely insane but 30 percent of the population of california is for it not having a choice which means i mean if i had a picture of some some creature putting their head in the sand and letting the whole world go on that's insane you need to be responsible for yourself okay now um is our society sleep deprived my god there's a coffee shop on every corner okay you know you got Diedrich, starbucks everything else so that's that's a clue but but also sleep deprivation it's one of the few tortures that's phenomenally effective you can interrupt someone's sleep and actually drive them insane so so when we start looking at this what's the medical what what happens okay under sleep under sleep deprivation your body goes into this fight or flight state like we just had um, this new patient yesterday, beautiful, 39-year-old gal, healthy, jogs a lot, wonderful, reverse curve in her neck, torn, and, and her honey was saying, look, you know, she just never sleeps. She can't sleep at all. No kidding. She's in a sympathetic dominant state or fight or flight. Now, what happens when you're in short-term sleep deprivation, this is the same thing as that fight or flight state. Now, obviously, there's going to be stress hormones, but you need LDL cholesterol. Now, why would you need LDL cholesterol if you're in a stress state? Cholesterol heals. Cholesterol heals. It's a good anti-inflammatory. It's also the precursor to every hormone you make. So knowing that you're going to need to get some adrenaline, noradrenaline, epinephrine, norepinephrine, you're going to need some cortisol, you're going to need all the stress hormones, oh my gosh, you're not going to want to produce a lot of progesterone because that's an immune system. And you know you mainly want to survive and now you're going to want a lot of energy too so blood sugar is going to be elevated blood supply to the gut is going to shut down what's what's interesting it's the exact same thing that happens under physical chemical and emotional stress so if you're having a sleep problem or sleep deprivation issue you're having it's the same thing as if you're in a traffic accident it's the same thing as if you're emotionally stressed it's the same thing as if you're eating breakfast and lunch at McDonald's that chemical stress okay okay just how to walk you through that one but this is all normal so now when you look at our society we're going to talk next week about non-communicable diseases NCDs and you may not have heard the term but these are diseases that are rampant. They're going to bankrupt our country. 
and, except it's not something you, ca you, you catch, it's something you earn. Now, if I was to say you're going to earn heart disease, you can earn um, diabetes, you can earn cancer, okay, think, these are not genetic and you can't catch them. You know, stay away from that guy, he's got sleep deprivation, you can catch it. No, that, that sounds foolish, okay, but when you look at this, in a normal stress response, blood pressure goes up. In a normal stress response, blood pressure goes up, yes or yes? Okay, and it has to, that's a normal response. In crazy world like ours, if, if your blood pressure doesn't match that model where you're supposed to be the same level as everyone else, because that's called homeostasis, and so if your body isn't regulating itself, what do they do? They give you a chemical to bring it up or down. Okay, if you're sad all the time, don't, no problem. We'll give you a, a stimulant. If you're happy all the time, no problem. That's manic. We'll give you an anti a, a depressive. You know, we need you the same all the time. And so when you look at this, these are not diseases. They're a normal stress response. I mean, how many people are taking cholesterol drugs? It's, I mean, epidemic proportion. And the cholesterol drugs, cholesterol doesn't clog arteries. It's the precursor to the best anti-inflammatory you got, cortisol. And then you look at how many people have digestive disorders. We're going to talk about that the next week in um, May. So this means if you're under stress, blood supply is shut down to the gut. So what are you going to have? Possible indigestion, poor motility. That means it's going to back up. You could have Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, weakened immune system. So all of these, these are diseases you earn and then, since we're talking about the enteric brain, the gut brain, what about depression, anxiety, Alzheimer's, dementia? Are these also diseases that you earn? Yeah, they, you earn, you don't catch them. Now, it's getting worse. Now, the, the last stats I got are 2010, and what's frustrating, that's five years ago. So you're talking millions of prescriptions. Now, what's frustrating, and this is for sleep, how much, and, and, and I got to tell you, if you've ever dealt with a drug addict before, because, you know, we deal with drug addicts all the time, except they're usually on prescription drugs. Okay, you're, you're taking some drugs, these antidepressants that have a side effect of suicide. I can't stop it. You know, I can't stop it. I tried to stop it a couple of times and I just couldn't stop it. Dude. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm not, this, this is actually what happens. So... If you're communicating to someone who's addicted to sleep medications, okay, realize that you're talking, you're getting a maximum of 11 minutes more sleep a night, 11 minutes. Uh, you're interrupting REM state of sleep, which is the deep aspect of sleep, which gives healing. You're um, going to fall asleep maybe a little bit sooner, but we're not quite sure if that's placebo or not. But the side effect is, I mean, where do you see what the sleeping pills do? They destroy your brain. They destroy your immune system. They're horrible. Uh, no, we're talking about drugs. In fact, at the end of this, since this is being recorded, then we're going to go over some questions. Okay, so, but, but if you look at this, if you're telling somebody who's been taking Ambien or Salmonex or, you know, all the, all the other different, you know, the, the little butterflies flying through the field, <laughs> if, you're, if you're seeing, this, if someone's taking that, you, you know how you communicate it? You know, you say... No, no, no. Sick people need drugs. Okay. When your body gets healthy, you're not going to need the drugs. Okay. Because if you tell someone to give up a drug, um, they're, they're, they think that the drug is actually necessary. But this is not only epidemic proportion, but what happens if you've got 60 million people taking sleep drugs and it negatively affects your memory, does that mean 60 million people are going to have memory problems? Wow. That means like dementia and stuff will be rampant in our population. Now, this one, I love this website, the thedarksideofsleepingpills.com. You couldn't get a longer website name, but I recommend, okay, you look at it, it, this one is incredible. Sleeping pills, 35% increase in cancer. No, it's not melatonin, this is the drugs. Now, why would a sleeping pill increase your risk of cancer? Well, for one, your body can't get the REM state of sleep. You're not getting the deep sleep. But when you look at this, four to six times, you die faster if you take a sleeping drug. And what was the benefit? Oh, you get to sleep um, 13 more minutes or 11 minutes, you get more sleep a night. Is it worth it? No, no, you gotta start looking at the facts on that. Now, Ambien, uh, when, you're, when you're doing the research on this, they call them Ambien zombies. Now, this is weird, okay? It, 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 raise your hand if you've heard of sleepwalking. 
Have you heard of sleep eating? I didn't. I thought it was a new thing. I'm going, you're kidding me. Really? God, I finally got an excuse. Okay, but have you heard of sleep driving? No. Yes. I mean, it's, it's incredible that these people can have that brain in such a state that it's devastating. Now, now what's the best amount of sleep a night? Now, what's interesting, <laughs> it, it kind of depends. Okay, what the research shows, it shows that seven hours is about the best. Okay, now, some people function better on four to five. Uh, very few people function more than eight. Okay, but it looks like seven hours on average is the, is the norm. And it turns out that disease rates, and seven hours is right in the middle there, disease rates go up if you sleep more than eight hours. And they go up if you sleep less than four hours. So, and, and the frustrating thing with the average insomniac, the average insomniac spends 14 hours in bed a day. But what happens to them is they roll around, they can't get sleep, they, they open up their eyes, they see the clock radio, they see it, you know, it's, it's 12 o'clock, they get pissed off, they roll around a few more, then they open their eyes, it's 2 o'clock, and they go, oh, damn it, it's been a whole hour, and they roll around. Any insomniacs? Okay, good, good, yeah. I'm going to show you how to correct that. It's really cool. Five days, you'll be sleeping like a baby. Um, this is another one, journal neurology. What they did is if people slept eight hours or more, or less than four hours, they found an increase of stroke for people. Why? Because they're in that chronic fight or flight state. They're not regenerating. The, so this isn't just you can't sleep good. This is stuff that you've got to fix. Now, the daytime impairment. If you look on the side, uh, or I shouldn't say side effects, the effects of sleeping medications, guess what it says? Daytime impairment. You're going to be tired during the day. Wait a second. I'm taking this pill so I can sleep at night, so I can have energy during the day. No, it talks about daytime impairment. In fact, it's a lot worse. Um, automobile accidents, falls, memory loss, confusion. And these are pay people taking these drugs for years. Now, what do you think sleep deprivation causes? Yes, memory loss, falls. It's the same thing because those drugs are interrupted in REM state of sleep. Um, healthiest people, and this is interesting, it's safer to sleep five to six hours than it is to sleep over eight. Okay, because your body is going to get the deep sleep. And in fact, when we talk about changing REM state of sleep to reset that circadian rhythm clock inside of your brain, one of the things that you're going to do is deprive yourself of sleep. Okay, now, now you might think, wait a second, that sounds crazy. Figure, we all have a circadian rhythm, a clock inside of our brain. Okay, and, and we have certain biologic functions because you're an animal species living on this planet. And if you don't live within the confines of that animal species, you have a dis-ease. What, what do they call that now? Disease. Okay, good. Yeah, they kind of blend it together. So if you have insomnia, you have to deprive yourself of sleep. So what you're going to do, you're going to go to bed between 10 and 10.30, at nighttime, and we're going to go over the prep work, but you're going to wake up at 4 to 4.30. And you're going to do this. What's tough is you've got to pick days that you're, because if you're an insomniac, and I read this study out of Glasgow, Scotland, that was, I mean, we're taking insomniacs who hadn't slept good for 20, 30 years. And you get up at 4 to 4.30, and you do this pattern for 21 days, but within five days, your brain has reset. This means no naps. Your brain has reset and you're instantly into REM state of sleep. After 21 days, you've reset that clock and you're now achieving deep sleep. It's, it's amazing, but there's a couple of preparatory things that you're gonna learn. The biggest thing, and this is, this is vital, you've got two halves of your nervous system, the fight or flight and the rest and digest, okay? Health is that your body is building up faster than it's breaking down. That's, that's bear nuggies, that's it. Disease is your body's breaking down faster and it's building up. When we talk about non-communicable diseases, the diseases that are literally going to wipe out our planet, within 15 years it's going to cost more money, 47 trillion US dollars, and sleep is the key to correcting it also, not treating it with medications. I know, because when you look at this, um, there's two types of sleep. 
Okay, and the one we're looking at is slow wave sleep or REM state of sleep, rapid eye movement. And this is that deep state of sleep. Now, I was watching the military channel the other night, and it's amazing. They train these soldiers, the Navy SEALs, to go into a REM state of consciousness when they're walking. So they can actually, so they can fight for five days in a row, four or five days in a row, as long as they get that REM state of sleep in consciousness for about two hours a day. So they don't need to be sleeping, but they can get their brain in that state. And I'm going, oh my God, this is amazing. I mean, who would think that you'd find some information on a sleep lecture watching the military channel? I thought it was totally cool. Okay, but, but when you look at it, people who work nights have a higher rate of disease. This is why they call it um, the graveyard shift. Because between 11 and 1 o'clock, this is when your gallbladder secretes. This is when you start to absorb healthy fats. So your body has that circadian rhythm that, that, that you need to get into in order to have your body function correctly. And if you're not getting that circadian rhythm, your body breaks down. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Now, you must be asleep between 11 and 1. Now, the tough part with this is... If you're not asleep between, like, like let's say you watch um, the news, okay? Now, if you're watching TV, have you ever seen a hypnotist? Okay, what do they do? Okay, kind of, put you to sleep. But what I'm going to do, I'm, I'm giving you a rhythmic image. And what the television does is it vibrates at about 60 cycles a second. And this, your brain gets into a rhythmic state. It's kind of like if you've ever been driving on the road and all of a sudden you realize you're like, you know, five miles further than you thought you were. You didn't fall asleep. You just kind of zoned out. Well, that's called white line fever because that rhythmic images of the white lines actually put your brain in a hypnotic state. So if you're watching TV right up before bed, you're, you're absolutely destroying your possibility of even getting deep sleep. You're going to go to bed, you're going to feel good. It's the same way about drinking alcohol. If you drink alcohol before bed, you're going to think, yeah, I'm all relaxed. You're only going to be sleeping a couple of hours, then you're going to be waking up again. Because again, it's a toxin, it's a poison. So when you start looking at this, you've got to realize that you have to reset your brain. So if you're watching, and I know this sounds crazy, but can you imagine watching news right before bed? I know, I know. It sounds absolutely insane. Because the news, is the news accurate? Like, do they say, you know, there's 15 million people that live in L.A., there were four robberies, there were 330 million acts of kindness? By God, what a lovely city we live in. And then do they detail out the guy opening the door for the gal or carrying groceries to the cart? Do they do that? Or they detail out the four robberies? Okay, you know, you know. You know, it's, it's, it's absolutely ridiculous. Okay, so don't program your brain with that. I mean, that, that, that just doesn't make sense. So, so when you look at this, you have to reset your brain. And you can do that. I mean, watch TV right up before bed. But 15 minutes before bed, you've got to read something, physically read something on paper. That means no computers. Because computers are also vibrating. I'm sorry. Computers are also vibrating at 65 cycles a second. Okay, so read something on paper 15 minutes before. And then, it, does anyone have a, like a frustrating technical day or is everybody's life just perfect? Perfect. Okay, good. Well, I'm the only one that has a day. <laughs> okay, so, so when, you're, when you're doing this, if your brain is thinking about what went on during the day, it's going to be like a tennis match. So you have to physically write it down. But the way the brain works is brilliant because if you physically write something down, your brain thinks, oh cool, I don't need to have, think about that. So it's logged away, everything's cool, then it can start to achieve deep sleep. So, I mean, it's simple tricks. But, I mean, when you look at some of the signs, and this is with every patient that comes in, imagine someone with allergies, anxiety, depression, fatigue, digestive disorders, high blood pressure. I mean, do you realize, like if you walked in this room, and the lights were off, would you start changing the light bulbs or check the switch? Okay, if somebody comes in and says, Doc, I'm so fatigued out, guess the first question I ask them, how do you sleep at night?
Oh, horrible, horrible, horrible. I haven't slept good in years. Oh, okay, good, let's fix it. I mean, honest to goodness, it's like the most basic stuff it will, will answer the questions. I mean, when you look at this, Parkinson's disease. Now, why would Alzheimer's disease, why would why would a multiple sclerosis, think of this, these are all diseases where the body is breaking down faster and it's building up. And if it is, and we know that the body builds up during the day, during the evening, this is when your system, your rest, digest, and repair system start to initiate or start to work. Does, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Now, what's frustrating in crazy world, our world, okay, where medications are king, if a Parkinson's patient, or an Alzheimer's patient, or a multiple sclerosis patient, if you got MS, you're 30 years old, you got two kids, are you going to be happy or a little scared? You're going to be completely nervous, okay? So are they going to say, look, I need you to journal at night, I need you to not watch TV right before bed, I need you to, to um, not take any sleep drugs, and any drugs you're on, those can negatively affect sleep. Are they going to say that to you? No, take Ambien. Okay, lock the refrigerator, but take Ambien. Okay, so, so when you look at it, it's, it's, and that's a journal of the American Medical Association. So sleep is, is, I mean, look at the drugs that cause it. Now, this is the most drug culture ever when you're talking about antacids. Now, why would antacids cause sleep issues? Antacids are going to limit how your body breaks down proteins. It's going to limit how your body breaks down or absorbs uh, minerals. So you're going to be calcium deficient, magnesium deficient, iron deficient. When you're looking at high blood pressure medications, that's crazy. Now, wait a second. That, this sounds even crazier. So lack of sleep causes what to the blood pressure? Okay, and high blood pressure drugs cause what to sleep? Screw up sleep. Can you see the cycle here? Okay, sleep causes poor gut function. Okay, you're not going to be digesting things. So that would be called indigestion. Okay, and what drugs do they give you for indigestion? Antacids. And that causes what? Sleep depravity. Can, can you see this? It's, it's insane. Why, why this isn't taught in, in medical schools, it doesn't make sense to me. But we're not talking cold medications. It just had a brilliant one on Benadryl, how Benadryl is actually causing psychosis. We've got a number of pharmacists that wouldn't take a Benadryl or an antihistamine to save their life because it negatively affects the brain function. Sedatives to use sleep, antihistamines, over-the-counter sleep medications, asthma drugs. I mean, obviously, and you could see that these are all drugs that, that not only negatively affect sleep, but if you negatively affect sleep, you cause that condition. Uh, the depression and antidepressants are drive me crazy. One of the questionnaires to find out if you have depression is how do you sleep at night? Oh, I sleep horrible. Okay, here, take this, this Depico, Wellbutrin, okay, antidepressant. Guess what the side effect of that is? Poor sleep. And it's, it's, it's like, no. I mean, let's look at this. Serotonin is produced in the gut. If you have poor sleep, you're not going to have appropriate serotonin production. If you're thinking about certain things and you're not getting appropriate sleep, what's the number one torture that you could drive a Navy SEAL crazy with is lack of sleep. I mean, you could torture people with this. Obviously, that's going to cause depression. But if you look at it, and this is the sleep disturbance. Difficulty falling asleep, periodic awakening, early morning awakening, maybe early symptoms of depression. No, it's not the signs of depression. Okay, throw away the diagnostic and statistics manuals. Let's look at this person as they've got physical, chemical, or emotional stress. Does that make more sense? I know, it does. Okay, now REM sleep. <laughs> um, blood pressure drugs block rapid eye movement or deep sleep. Blocking rapid eye movement or deep sleep causes high blood pressure. Yeah, we're, we're going to get out of some of this. Now, what's frustrating, this is the Journal of Pediatrics. 38% of pediatricians prescribe a drug to a child for sleep onset delay. Now, we already know that the drugs given for sleep interrupts REM state of sleep. We know that it causes gastrointestinal problems. We know that it can cause mental disorders. Does this, is this one of the reasons that 50% of our kids today have a chronic illness or disease? Huge. Now, are kids watching TV right up before bed? Or video games? 
or they're playing them in bed. Okay, does that mean that their brains are in this hypnotic state? Yeah, I mean, we get kids all the time, oh, I can't get up for class. No, you can't, you, you don't have any skills for sleeping. Okay, we, we just gotta fix that. Um, oh, the, the, the Journal of the American Medical Association, if you look at this, the error rate for prescribing for children, and we get kids all the time. The, the worst one, a four-month-old kid throwing up was given an antacid. Okay, that's a nurse, forgive her. She, she, she loves people. Okay, okay, she's, she's unarmed, don't worry. I know I had the same feeling. It was like four month old kid in antacid. What are you nuts? He's not producing too much acid. The kid's in some type of stress state, okay? Uh, God knows he might've been born in a hospital and the mother might have been given Pitocin and an epidural and you know, it was probably four sibs birthed and then he was you know, slapped in the rump, vitamin K, a little bit of silver nitrate in the eye and an hepatitis B shot at 12 hours. I'd be pissed too to come into the world that way. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's just not right. And, and when you look at our kids today, are they rampant with brain disorders, attention deficit disorder? Um, just, this, this one gal, she came out from Texas and just a sweet, sweet kid. She said, yeah, yeah, it's, it's my OCD. It's my OCD, I focus in. And I said, obsessive compulsive disorder? There's no such thing. And she looks at me like, no, there is a such thing, you know? My psychiatrist told me about it, so it must be, you know, it must have a shape, right? And I said, no, I said, you're gifted. I said, you're not obsessed. I said, you can focus in on whatever you want. It's just you're focusing in on stuff that other people don't want. She said, yeah, that's the same thing like attention deficit disorder, that doesn't exist either. You look at every ADD kid, every ADHD adult, okay? Do they have trouble focusing on stuff they want to focus on? No, they've got a hyperacuity gift. All they gotta do is learn how to focus it and they're phenomenally successful. It's, it's ignorant to say that that exists. Yeah, and, and this is why sleep is so vital for kids. So when you go home and you learn these techniques, you gotta teach them to your kids, you gotta teach them to the grandkids, you gotta teach them to the neighbor's kids. I, I mean, sleep problems with ADHD? No, it's not. Think of this. If a kid is not sleeping correctly, what happens to their gut function? Good or decreased? Decreased. decreased? What happens to their autonomic activity? Are they stuck in a fight or flight? Of course they are. They'd be great at paintball, but they'd suck at sleep. Okay, so, so when you look at this, I mean, it, it just makes sense. Attention deficit hy hyperactivity disorder doesn't exist. It's the person adapting to physical, chemical, and emotional stress. If you look at this, what is ADHD weigh? What's the shape of it? Can you catch it? No, these are one of those diseases, the mental disorders that's affecting our kids that you gotta actually earn. Okay, so I had to bring this up. Okay, now, now this gal came in this week. Now, now get this, okay, 88 years old. She was hit by a car in 1979, severing one of her legs. Okay, this is her body now. That's a reverse curve in the neck with massive fusion. And she has one leg in a wheelchair, 88 years old. And I said, and her one knee is starting to break down. And I said, no problem. You know, you can bend it, knees can regenerate. And so while we're doing the physical, I'm having her do one exercise, which is just dangling a knee with heat on it. And I said, no, keep dangling it. Okay. And I'm doing, doing her history and stuff. It, it, you stop, keep dangling it. Okay, so, so I'm, I'm not being really nice to her, okay? And then her shoulders are hurting because she can't lift them up. And so, so I tell her to move her arms while we're doing the physical and stuff. And uh, um, she said, do you really know how old I am? And I said, I said, yeah, you know, your joints are about 14 months old. Because she thought I was crazy because every doctor she'd been to has been giving her what? non anti-inflammatories, pain relievers. Obviously, if you're 88 years old in a wheelchair with a leg severed, you, ca you can't be happy. So you gotta be on an antidepressant. And she's thrown away all these drugs. She thought they're stupid. And I said, no, hon, you're, you're ideal. Well, what, what was cool is um, she said she felt better immediately. And, and what's wild is if you're 88, your joints are only 14 months old. Okay, so, so now what do you think she's gonna sleep like tonight? better because she's got hope. She knows that her body can regenerate. 
And, and so I'm picking like a really tough case. Inadequate sleep affects hormone levels. How many people are taking testosterone supplements or estrogen supplements? And a, a, a gal stopped me in the, in the uh, market over here. She recognized me and she said, you know, you know wh what do I do for menopause? I said, well, you can move to a country where it's not an issue. If you're in this country, okay, it's a major issue because, you know, we're exposed to so many estrogens and that's what pesticides are. You know, you could take some maca root, but how are you sleeping at night? I know. I always say, what do you think she said? Horrible. Okay, yeah, okay, good. So let's work on the sleep. You got physical, chemical, or emotional stressors we got to deal with. You'll be fine. Women do need more sleep than men. Men, if you're smart, she's sleeping, let her sleep. <laughs> hey, any guy can argue with that? Okay, good, good. <laughs> okay, I want to show you this. I mean, a 60-year-old guy, chronic pain. Now, when you look like this on x-ray standing up straight, do you think that you're going to be laid, able to lay down in a comfortable position? No, that's the same thing with that, that gal idiot. She, when she would roll on her slide, her shoulders would hurt. Okay, same thing with him. So if you're sleeping in a different position and it wakes you up, but then if your body is responding that way, what's a correct, a correct response by your body if you have trouble sleep? Are you correctly going to elevate your cholesterol levels? Yes, are you correctly going to adapt to this toxic situation by developing higher blood pressure? Yes or yes? Yes. Yeah, so you look at this, those are not diseases, those are adaptations. Are you going to have trouble remembering stuff? Yes, because you're not sleeping correctly. And, but, but what's weird is this is what's causing the, the end of our society because we think that those adaptations to the physical, chemical, and emotional stress are actually diseases when they're not. And then what makes them worse is if you treat them with drugs. What happens if you take a blood pressure drug? What does that do to sleep? An antacid, what does that do to sleep? A sleep drug, what does that do to sleep? I mean, you're, you're talking, it, it just, none of it, it's, it's illogical. It's illogical. We've got to fix it. Oh, within two weeks he was sleeping good. That's him 90 days later. Okay, so cool. <laughs> uh, now this is the cure, okay, for insomnia. Deprive yourself of sleep, but do it quickly. Okay, it takes 21 days to reset your, the clock in your brain. Within five days you'll be sleeping like a baby, guaranteed. First, you've got to solve the physical, chemical, and emotional stressors. Okay, find out what physical, chemical, and emotional stressors. If there's a physical stress, get your body x-rayed, get the, find out the pressure on the nervous system. If there's emotional stress, you have to journal. And journaling at nighttime settles your brain. And it, has anyone in here ever journaled? Raise your hand if you journal. Okay, so a quarter of the audience. Okay, so, so let me explain what journaling is. It's not going to be read by anybody. You don't even need to read it. It could be a quarter page. It could be a full page. You don't want to do like a novel. Okay, and it's just like, you know, had a really crazy day today. I yelled at, you know, the owner of the building. Um, you know, I had a patient that didn't listen to me, but I had four patients that did, and it was really cool. And... I'm looking forward to getting my son out here who's lost his passport in the Philippines and he doesn't know where the hell it is and he's stuck over there for three weeks until he finds... Uh, did he really? Yes, this is all true! Okay, so I'm going to write this down when I journal tonight. He's stuck over there, can't start school, lost his passport, yeah. Okay, so journal, okay, and you're going to be okay. Okay, but, but also, too, you you got to go to, what's the toughest day in the week to get up? Monday morning. Yeah, because cool, it's Saturday, we can party, okay? No, go to bed at the same time. Your, your friends will think you're boring, but you're going to have more energy and be more successful. You know, eventually you'll all get on the same rhythm and you'll party during the day, okay, and sleep at night. Honest to goodness, it, it really works. Use the bedroom for sleep only. Kind of, okay? I mean, you, d you don't, I mean, you know, if you're married, you can play, but, but you don't want to watch TV, you don't want to eat the crackers in bed, you don't want to, you know, you know, play video games in there, okay? 
it, it, I mean, it, it's it's really, really simple because, I mean, insomniacs spend a lot more time in bed. It's got to be perfectly dark. You've got to cover the clock radio with a, with a cloth. This, I know, I know. You find him extremely attractive. I know, I know. This is a CPAP machine. Okay, now, how many species on the planet need a machine to sleep because they're going to stop breathing during the night? Okay, you said one. Okay, you're incorrect. You said none. You are correct. Okay. No, if any species needs help to sleep, that there's a problem there. Okay. Okay, and it's a problem with perception. You've got a cardiac and respiratory center at the base of the neck. You've got a cardiac and you've got a sensor in your neck that governs the diaphragm function. Your sleep patterns are going to be interrupted under stress. What kind of stress? Physical, chemical, or emotional stress. This is a travesty. I mean, people are going in there saying, you know, let's do a sleep study on you. I'm going to, I'm going to check your breathing during the sleep, okay? Oh, did you know that you stop breathing, okay, about 10 times during the night? And, and that means you might stop breathing and not wake up again. So here, you need this machine. Okay, that's crazy world. Okay, 50 years from now, do you know what they're going to say? You're having trouble sleeping? You gotta have physical, chemical, or emotional stress. Let's find out those stressors because you're a normal human being and sleep is normal for you. Okay, I'm not gonna do a test and see how many times you stop breathing throughout the night. That's kind of stupid. Okay, what we are gonna do, we're gonna check your nervous system, we're gonna check the physical, chemical, and emotional stressors in your life to make sure that your body is functioning correctly. Nobody has a problem with this sleep. And this is why you're finding extremely obese people are going to have um, problems with breathing. People that have office work, why? Because their head's forward and this is the nerve to the diaphragm. People that have been in auto accidents, okay, are going to have problems with breathing. This is all a clue to the body's physical, chemical, or emotional stressors. Does that make sense? I look at this thing as just the same way. I mean, even say sleep on your side, elevate your bed, maintain regular sleep hours, all of these will help. But wait a second, if you sleep on your side, what are you doing? You're changing the pressure on the nervous system. If you elevate your head, you're changing the pressure on the nervous system. You're changing proprioception. So all of these things, instead of doing silly things, find the actual cause. Okay, now, now this is on your sheet. These are the things you gotta not do. And it just, it seems basically simple, okay? Nervous system checked, medications, find out why they gave them. Sick people need drugs. But what's weird is if, if a healthy person takes a drug, what happens to them? They get sick. They get sick. Now, since most of these diseases are non-communicable diseases, they're diseases that you actually earn, this is why you're taking the drugs, okay? Um, as your body gets healthy and you do those lifestyle changes, okay, you better start monitoring the medication. So talk to the drug guy that gave you the drugs and say, hey, by the way, my body's getting healthier. How do I get off of them? Okay, or talk to the chiropractor and he'll, he'll give you a plan to show you. Because if you're taking blood pressure drugs and your blood pressure is too low, guess what happens to oxygen in the brain? Goes too low. It's bad for you. Okay, this is why dementia and Alzheimer's is, I mean, dementia is at four times the cost of cancer in this country. Um, erratic sleep patterns, overactive mind, this means the journaling before bed, uh, watching TV, make sure you read something, alcohol, caffeine, lack of cardio. I mean, if you do a nice little walk after dinner, you'd be amazed at how, what that does for the lymph flow. I mean, if you live in Missouri and it's winter time, it'll be a little cold. <laughs> so, you know, don't. And these tricks, these, these are tricks for deep sleep. And I know it's small up there. That's why I put it on your, on your sheet. And if you're watching this on YouTube, these are all, you can get the handouts on deep sleep. I'll get you a handout. Okay. Um, and and it's, it's weird, but when you look at it, white noise. Okay, luckily I live next to the ocean and the, there's a road right next to the ocean and both sound like water. <laughs> it's true. A anyone live next to a freeway? I grew up next to the freeway. It, it, it sounded just like the ocean. Okay, um, it, it, it's got to be completely dark, no TV, read something. Yeah, yeah, if you're going to read something before bed, make sure it is not Zane Gray. <laughs> okay, you, you read Zane Gray when you were a teenager too. Okay, yeah. And he picked her up in his arms. And it was like, holy moly. <laughs> <laughs>
No, you want to read something like the book of Numbers, okay? Ezra begat this, begat that. I'm telling you, okay, that, because the, the, there's some uh, the far out exciting parts of the Bible, that's not one of them. <laughs> you know, keep it nice and cool, ho protein straight, um, a hot bath or hot shower is phenomenal. And again, this is for all the insomniacs. Okay, you're going to change your sleep patterns, so you have to prep. It's like training. If your brain has been messed up and you haven't gotten deep sleep for years, you have to train for it. And it's going to take that prep work before bed. You're going to have to take a hot shower. You're going to have to physically read something. You're going to have to go to bed at 10 to 10.30. You're going to have to get up at 4 to 4.30. You're going to have to get your nervous system checked. All of this stuff, but, by, but the reward is incredible. Your body will actually work right. I mean, it, it's, it's phenomenal, the rewards. This is, and, and I know this sounds, this, this is what we put up on every talk and it seems too simple. You need to have your nervous system checked. You need regular exercise, nutrition, sufficient rest. Rest is when your body regenerates. Does, does that make sense? Okay, good. And you need to have prayer and meditation and that's phenomenal. I mean, if you have a connection with a power greater than yourself, that, that, there's nothing better. Now, next week we're going to talk about non-communicable diseases and I'm going to show you how to recover from them. And also when you, um, I was actually watching, doing some research today on this, oh my gosh. They were saying that it's so tough for the pharmaceutical industry because they don't have enough R&D in this area and that they need um, their, their, a lot of their drugs or their patents are running out. And I'm going, are you serious? Mm -hmm. The largest industry in the world, the one that's responsible for more deaths than um, any war on the planet, okay, and these guys are in need of money? Good. Let them do a friggin' bake sale for cholesterol drugs. Okay, then, then we're gonna talk about Crohn's disease. Then we're gonna talk about adrenal fatigue and the thyroid. So we got an exciting month. So thank you very much.